Would you like to learn about enterprise architecture operating models? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs. I'm an enterprise architect with a little over 25 years experience. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about enterprise operating models. Specifically, we'll discuss what is an operating model, and then we will discuss the four operating models that we typically see in enterprise architecture. So to begin, what is an operating model? So the enterprise architecture operating model is gonna be the executive plan about how much that company's business needs to have a standardized way of doing things or a standardized process and how tightly coupled or loosely coupled their technology systems need to be. And this is all in an effort to help our organizations operate uh, more efficiently. And it's part of what goes on to align our people, our processes and technology, which is what we do as enterprise architect. Now, different core organizations will need to operate differently. And because of that, they will need different operating models. What I'll do is I'll give you basically two examples of two companies that have very different operating models. And then I'll actually talk about the operating models themselves. So I want you to think of Marriott Hotels. Marriott Hotels always impressed me. And the reason, if I checked in, into a Marriott in Dubai, I checked into a Marriott in Sydney, I checked into a Marriott in New York, I checked into a Marriott in London, and I checked into a Marriott in Miami. And guess what? They have all my points. They have my you know frequent use status, uh, the Marriott through the Marriott Rewards Program, all my likes, all my dislikes. They know about it ahead of time with every Marriott I go to. Now, not all Marriott hotels are the same. They have various levels of train, but no matter which one I go to, they all know it's me and they all give me the rewards and points that have come from my frequent traveling. Now, in order to do that, and we'll talk about it more later, there has to be a standardized process at Marriott on the way they do certain things, and they have to have systems that actually talk to each other to make it happen. So that's one type of a company that needs a very specific operating model. Now, by comparison, let's look at the Virgin Group out of England. They own Virgin Airlines. They own mobile phones. They own wine. They own a book company. They own a whole lot of things. And bless what? The reality is it takes a different way to apply a plane than it does to sell a mobile phone. So that's a company that's not going to need very standardized process, and they might need looser coupling of their systems, which we'll talk about much more. So the operating model is going to set the required levels of business process integration and standardization across the enterprise. It will help us align our people, our processes, and technology. So let's talk about the four operating models that exist in enterprise architecture. The first operating model is what's called a diversification model. And an organization that uses a diverse, uh, diversification model typically has many different business units, and each business unit tends to operate its own way. The old General Electric, where they were making airline engines, for example, and they were making aerospace gear, and they were making medical devices, very different systems and very different business units. Now, typically speaking, a diversification model really can help an organization get some economy of scale. We're going to build one network for all of General Electric, for example, and all the businesses will share that same network or cloud or whatever it is that we're using. So they'll gain some economies of scale. But if it's an organization that's so separate where each business unit does its own things, we don't need to standardize processes across departments because people that are doing with airplanes, engines will need something different than the medical world. So we're not tightly coupling the systems. We're not tightly coupling the business processes in that type of a diversification model. Johnson & Johnson is another example of a company like that. It's a company that owns surgical supplies like Ethicon and the Stitches. They make pharmaceuticals, which they've acquired from Jensen Pharmaceuticals, for example. They've got uh, other types of medical technology. All, com all, all various business units doing very different things across an organization, so they don't need that kind of pro standardized process or tightly coupled uh, systems. Now that brings us into the coordination operating model, where we have very high integration between our systems, but we're not working so hard to standardize processes across organizations. So this is a really great model 
where we have multiple business units in different businesses, but they depend upon each other's data. So let's think of the kind of organizations that would benefit from that. Let's say the MetLife organization, this huge global insurance company. Well, MetLife, for example, is involved in life insurance, which is one business. They're involved in disability insurance, which is a completely different business than life insurance. They're involved in group benefits for organizations, and they're involved in retirement planning and other things. So they may actually share some customer names and customer information and demographics across their system, but they leave the flexibility for a life insurance salesperson to do it their way versus someone that sells group benefits to do it their way because it's completely different things. And uh, that was the uh, coordination model, which is really about high integration and low standardization of processes. Now that brings us to the replication model. Now in the replication model, we have very high standardization of our business processes, but at the same time, we have fairly low integration of the system sharing technology. Now, when we work in a replication environment, this is really optimal where you need to basically produce the same thing in the exact quality in every part of the world, but you may not need to share between organizations. So think of McDonald's, for example. A McDonald's, for example, where the little individual stores may not need to speak to each other, but every store has a very high standard of process. Everything is made exactly the same way. Everything, uh, the equipment is exactly the same, but McDonald's store in Kentucky doesn't need to speak to McDonald's store in somewhere else. So what you can see here is a highly standard process. And yes, there is some moderate degree of standardization, but what you're actually dealing with in integration of the technologies is we're still dealing with separate technology systems. Now, McDonald's corporate is another story than the McDonald's franchises. Now that guts us into the world of companies that have extreme unification where they have got lots of standardized business processes and incredibly standardized technology platforms. Now, when we get into this environment, we're typically dealing with a global conglomerate that has shared data, shared systems, and a standard process across the organization for doing something. And by doing that, they can control quality, they can share systems, but this works well in businesses that are in a very standard thing. Uh, Delta Airlines, for an example, this is a textbook case of unification. Integrated technology, standardized operational processes. If you try to get on a plane in Georgia, like Atlanta, Georgia, or you board a plane in New York City, it's going to be the same experience with Delta Airlines. The people that are using the systems in Atlanta and New York are going to be very similar. UPS is another kind of example. The people that bring your packages to you, standardized trucks, standardized technology, standardized ways of doing everything. And that is great for an organization that needs that kind of unified environment, tightly coupled systems and tightly coupled business processes. So, you know, as we start thinking of them, we it, if we simplify it, it's really, do we need a lot of integration between our systems? And if we do, that tells us one thing. Do we need standard processes or not standard processes? The person in a McDonald's that wants to stamp out the identical hamburger every single time in any part of the world needs very standard equipment, very standard ovens that heat things to a certain thing, a standard patty that's a standard thickness to come out the same way at the same time. But someone at the Ritz-Carlton, you check in, your room's not your way, the managers have the ability to really make it right. And they need a lot more flexibility and autonomy than the person at McDonald's to be able to do this. So as it really comes out is choosing the operating model is truly about choosing what's going to be the best for the business. In this video, we covered the four enterprise architecture operating models. At Go Cloud Careers, we have programs for enterprise architect careers, cloud architect careers, security architect careers, and AI architect careers. And if you'd like to learn how to start your architecture career or get your first architect job, join us for one of our free bi-weekly webinars where we'll go over various architectural roles. We'll talk about exactly what we do in the architecture roles. We'll talk about the exact skills that you need to get hired. And we'll talk about the things that you can do to stand out and get hired regardless of your level of experience for your first 
enterprise architect, security architect, AI architect, or cloud architect role. In these free webinars, you can ask us questions. We'll answer your questions. We'll do anything we can to go build your career. And it is completely free. You can sign up for one of our free architecture webinars in the description of this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your IT architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you soon.